My main legacy here is as a teacher in the contemplative arts. And what has been most important is to develop curriculum that offers the student a way to bring body and mind together. An early phrase from Trungpa Rinpoche in those Dharma art teachings was synchronizing body and mind. And this caught me immediately. My first impression was an, a performance actually that she did and uh, her feet were amazing. <laughs> she had the most beautiful arch. And then other things that I remember about her was just this incredible sense of line from the tip of her toes through her body and right out her head. I decided to take her contemplative dance class and I had just been a person who was going all the time really fast and she walked out into the space and she you know does this and her Cunningham fingers and her articulate feet and she's looking around and I'm thinking like I have no idea what this is as an artist, she opened a door for me to understand that form was not the most important thing. That actually what we needed to find was something much more quiet and in, inner in ourselves. So the process of learning how to meld meditation and contemplative practice with art making not only changed the way I made art or performed, but it's changed the way I've taught, the way I practice in my own body, the way I see the world. When I was a, a training to be a dancer, the idea was come up with something new all the time and create, 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 and don't do your old favorite things. And here she was saying, do what you like. Find kinesthetic delight. Do it over again. Do it again. And do it again. And when it's time to stop, something else will emerge. And when I think of Barbara, I think of this vision as very uh, strong of uh, simplicity and allegiance to the moment and to presence and to not coming up with, you know, big storylines and agendas and uh, that's not easy. <laughs> and she holds the line on that and um, I think that's a tremendous gift that we'll keep giving uh, through all of her students. The deep play practices that Barbara Dilley introduced me to at Naropa, uh, combining Dharma art practices and postmodern performance making practices, have revolutionized <laughs> my ability to stay engaged with the world, whether that's art making or just being with my fellow people. What is contemplative education and learning in, in practice? I would say that's Barbara. I think she embodies what Naropa is in the contemplative tradition. Should everybody be so lucky to actually be in a classroom with her? Barbara's, uh, you know, words and lessons have really made me understand that Art is something that is not just for professionals, but is something that we can all delight and uh, it's in us. Her lifelong practice, the rigor and discipline that she applies to her artistic process and her contemplative practice, and how she's languaged that and worked and stayed with that over the years, and her direct connection to um, the legacy of the founder of the university, I think, is, is an important legacy because she carries that through. You kind of get roped into this place and it gets a grip on you in, in, a, in a way. And uh, Barbara, of course, was here from the beginning as a faculty member and a dancer and a choreographer and a, a teacher of dance. And, and um, uh, no one expected her to become president. And the last person who expected her to become president was Barbara. That a dancer 
actually one of the really great dancers of our time, would be named the president of a, of a very important major educational institution. It's amazing to me that um, Naropa would hire such a warrior president. Barbara came to Naropa as the president uh, in a very unlikely way. She was an artist and she was a woman, neither of which were very commonly found in university presidents, certainly in the 1980s. Barbara was a creative and a fearless leader. She was the perfect example of somebody who was devoted to Naropa's founding lineage and who clearly had her sights set on Naropa's future. She's touched so many lives, profoundly, uh, heartfully, lovingly. She has given so many artists and so many people uh, sustenance in terms of like encouragement and inspiration. You are one of the great and most inspiring, one of the greatest technical dancers of your generation. And a whole generation of dancers actually uh, danced differently because of the way that you moved and because of the way of the choices that you made about time and space. And you've in created a space for people to move without beginning or without end. That's something that none of us can really thank you enough for. Barbara, on behalf of the entire Naropa community, I want to thank you for your four decades of devoted service as a creative member of our faculty and as a remarkable president. I just want to thank you, Barbara, for trusting in me, that trust that you had and have in all of us as bodies that are capable of expressing tremendous um, insight that just comes from openness. Uh, it's been a truly a privilege and an inspiration to be uh, working with you and in your presence the last 10 years as a student and a colleague and uh, a friend. Not a lot of words, simply I love you. Thank you Barbara. I've learned immensely not only as an artist but also as a teacher and as a human being. This is indeed an ending and you always taught us to mark the beginning, the middle, and the end. And with that, I wish you a really glorious ending and a perfect beginning over and over again.